For those of you who have been to my website or have seen me design before, you probably know, you've probably seen a lot of these images before, the kind of work that I do. For some reason, a lot of people think that I'm, you know, just really good at organizing, but there's actually a very basic rule that I'm gonna teach everybody today that'll help you not only design your gardens better, but help you understand why you enjoy certain gardens over others. And that is actually based on this thing right here. This is just a simple color wheel. Has anybody seen a color, color wheel before? Show of hands. All right, so the whole point of a color wheel is to show how the brain reacts to color. Every color has a certain, um, I guess you would say a complementary color. Very, very basic ones, green to red, orange to blue, and yellow to violet. The Laker colors, if anyone's a Laker fan. Now, immediately when somebody thinks of yellow and purple together, it immediately catches your eye. That is called the complementary color. And anytime you do that, you automatically direct an eye that particular location. Let's say you have a door that you really, really like and you want everybody to see it. Then paint your door yellow and put purple trim on it. Bang, no matter what else you have in your design, that is the first thing people are gonna, gonna look at. Also, complementary colors are a great way to direct a line. And I'll talk about line in just a second. But if you look in this picture right here, you'll notice that I have a little line of purple right up here, and above it, just barely, is a little line of yellow. The reason I did that was that underneath all these plants was some kind of undesirable pavement materials that people wanted to hide. So I directed the eye up. And in doing so, it made people not notice the pavement materials, but looked up. So it's all about leading the eye, which is a very basic component of design. Now you'll also notice that on this color wheel, there's colors that are not necessarily directly opposite of each other, but somewhat close to each other. Yellow and blue would be a, a, a combination I use quite a bit. It's a beautiful, if, you, if you're, anybody who plays football probably remember the Rams, yellow and blue. Immediately recognizable logo because of those color combinations. Now let's say that I were to combine green and blue. Green and blue are very close to each other in the color wheel, and it gives slightly different effect. It has a feeling of blending, of, of things working together. That's, so what you wanna do is create a design hierarchy. A hierarchy is a way to understand the eye and tell the eye where to go. I like to break my hierarchies into threes. I would start with my primary focus colors. I would do maybe say, yellow and purple. So the eye immediately goes there first. And then I would do a secondary group, maybe yellow and blue, the eye would go there second. And then at the very last, I would go blue and green. So the eye goes there last. This is a rule that is brought up in advertising. If you ever look at an ad, you'll always notice your eye goes somewhere here first, second, third. That is a very, very classic combination. It's a great way to get people to focus on three different points, and then you, the garden suddenly makes sense. It's, it has a certain punch to it. So this is a great way for you to design, a great way to understand colors, but there's something else. You'll notice that there's no brown in this. There's a lot of other colors, like let's say the color of concrete. Who here can tell me what the color of, of what concrete is? It's a gray, but it's not really gray. It's actually, it's a, either a warm gray or a cool gray. If it's a cool gray, you'll notice that it has just a little bit of purple in it. If it's a warm gray, it has just a little bit of red in it. And the best way to figure that out is take its complementary color and put it up against it this uh, paving material that you see underneath you, people will say it's gray. 
it's actually a very light shade of violet, a very light shade of blue. And you'll notice the boards underneath it are a very subtle shade of yellow with a little bit of orange to it. We put them next to each other and everybody knows where the walkway is all of a sudden. So yet again, color is a great way to draw people's attention. It's also a great way to establish moods. If you're dealing with a, uh, a landscape that has quite a bit of, um, if you want to make people feel relaxed in your garden and feel very comfortable, then use your colors in ways where they all are very close together. If you do something like, let's say, lots of violets, lots of blues, and lots of greens, these are very cool, relaxing colors. They elicit a sense of peace and grounding. Also, this, the ones up above here, when I go to the yellows and the reds and the oranges, these are very warm colors, very passionate colors. Like our flamenco dancer, for instance. <laughs> very brightly colored. And that elicits a, a feeling of, of warmth and sincerity, and it, it really elicits a very positive reaction. Also, you'll find a lot of the uh, inter international design palettes of different countries use certain blends. In, the, in India, for example, they have an absolutely gorgeous color palette where they, they take pink and yellow and orange and red, and everybody who sees that, immediately they think of India because of those, those color combinations. So I'll tell you a few more things about, about design, then I'll answer some questions.